Okay, now if everything goes well at training, who have you considering to add into the side because you've got to make changes? Uh, this, well, it's a really, it's quite a challenging one because at the moment, currently we, we know we have two people out. Uh, Houston's out with concussion and, and Riley Bonner's out with um, health and safety, so he's, he's in the COVID situation. So that means we've got to you know, look at a couple of changes to our side, how we go about that. You know, we're about to go through our main session for the week today, so we'll look at all that and we'll come up with the with the scenarios. But we have got a reasonably healthy squad outside of those two, so all things are on the table for us. Um, you'll, you'll be out there watching today and you'll see who's out there and who's doing what, but the reality is um, I think uh, Fantasia's away ill today, so he's not, not health and safety, but he's just away ill. Cleary's out there on a bike. I'm giving you all the information I can possibly. Tico will be out there. Um, and we haven't made our final decision on who those people are, though, that will come into the side. Jones, we hope, will get through training today and be available, so that will give us another option. So beyond those issues of Bonner and um, Houston, does Collingwood also present you some challenges of changing up your lineup, or do you think what's best for yourself first? Yeah, us first. I mean, us first. We know we've seen Collingwood play a you know, really strong brand of football all season. We're quite an aggressive football team. You know, they've got... You know, a good squad available themselves and they're, they're challenging obviously everyone they won nine in a row I think so they're, they're a real challenge at the MCG in front of their their fans so um, this we, but we need to make sure we're as close to what we need to be first and foremost. No Grundy so do you keep Dixon and Finlayson is it easier um, to keep them in that role? Not sure about Grundy because it's still not announced teams and I think there's some chance they're that he saying, may or may well, not. They're saying he won't play? Yeah well, I see uh, Cox was away from training so that may change their decision so mm. we'll We'll expose it, um, but we'll look at, as I said before, we'll look at the Teakel slash Hayes slash Finlayson and Dixon, which has been working pretty well for us. Is there a Ruckman in front of the other one, if you were going to bring in Teakel or Hayes? Uh, it's pretty close. I think it's pretty close. I think Sam's last couple of weeks have been really strong too, and uh, you know Bryn was very, very unlucky with what happened to him, and he showed enough that we, we were excited about what he may bring to our footy team at some point. Charlie said in an interview with us yesterday that he's really eager to play more than one quarter this year with him, Finlayson and Marshall in the forward line. That's well, they've done that regularly, just that one of them's been in the ruck. Yeah, so he's keen to, to have a go with the, the three of them at once and more than one quarter against Sydney. Is that something that you are eager to explore or are you, are you that satisfied with him and Finlayson rucking? Um, I, I think ultimately, Max, we'd, lo we'd like it to be that we'd have a ruckman Pick, particularly picked in the team, but at the moment we haven't had that availability to us through injury and form, so we will make those choices at the right time, but we, we're a team typically who has played with a genuine ruck. Ken Collingwood scores more than it did last year, more than two goals under McRae, and Ollie Wines pointed out when I was it the other day that they do play a game that exposes them to some risk and could play into your turnover game, but you've got to actually finish it off, so do you see it playing out that way? I think it'll be a, a high-pressure game, a turnover game at the MCG, which will be with plenty of space. I think it'll certainly be a challenging game for both teams at some point, um, defending the Oppo's offence. And, uh, you know, they're, they're really strong behind the ball too. You know, they've got some great defenders that they've had, Maynard, Howe, you know, Moore, just to name three or four of their players that are, you know, young Dacos has been a marvellous player for them in these, his first year. So there's there's a lot of challenges, but we, we, we can provide equally as many challenges for any team in the competition, as we've showed over the last couple of weeks without getting a result. But the key remains, you've got to actually make the most of those opportunities again. Yeah, even that doesn't always guarantee, but yeah, obviously in any game you want to maximise your opportunities going forward. And, you know, last week we were, we were able to do that, but we still didn't get a result. Um, Dacos, do you need to give him some extra attention? I mean, do you Everyone else is giving him plenty of attentions and it's not really working too well, I don't think. So, he's just, a, you know, he's a fantastic first year player. You know, I don't think there's anyone surprised by what he's been able to do in his first season. He's high talented player, highly talented player who's got an amazing future, but you know, we'd be foolish to think that there's one player that we need to focus on more than the rest because there's so many players, you know, they've got, you know, Dugowie, Elliott, you know, they've got Adams, Pendlebury, side bottom. There's a fair, fair list of players in that team that people have forgotten that there's a high quality um, list with a lot of talent. What's the mood of the group been like this week, considering everyone's written them off saying the maths was just too hard now? Uh, mood of the group's been really positive. The mood of the group is that we're still in the we're still in the fight, and we're still in the challenge, and we're going to keep chasing. And you know, you, I don't think anyone would expect me to stand here today and say that we're um, we're not chasing as hard as we've ever chased, and we're going to keep going. You know, uh, we'll, we'll stay in it as long as we possibly can. And what I'm really proud about the group is that they they bring the same attitude to work every week, and you know, right from the start of the year right through till today, they they're here with enthusiasm. Are they affected by the outside noise of what might happen or might not happen here next year? No. No, not at all. I think that's football clubs deal with that all the time. You'd be surprised at how much 
lack of notice that we take of that sort of stuff. Yeah, and we, we come to work to work with each other and we enjoy working with each other and um, you know, our, our job and our responsibility is to perform at our best this week. There are certain things that are quite hard to ignore on your way into work though, Ken? Uh, uh, I come the other way. <laughs> <laughs> so I come the other way, so I don't, I don't, I don't see anything. All jokes aside, I know you've said in the past that no one's more surprised than criticism, and, and you know how passionate your supporters are. That would sting most people, I think, on their way into work. You worries me not one bit. So do you empathise with those fans? The ones who who put those signs up? No. I think it's a really poor thing to do. I think it's a really weak thing to do. Does it resonate with you at all? I mean, do you laugh it off? Is it water off a duck's back? Or is that just passion, as Monty said? Or? I'm not quite sure. The answer to the question is, oh, it doesn't worry me. Yeah. I, mo I move on with my day and I move on with my week and I prepare my team the best I possibly can. I think that um, every football club has great passion in it, but there's a line. Do you think it worries your, your players or your staff? No, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't think it affects us inside. And you now that, that probably starts being a player in form or out of form, that being a coach who people think's in or out of form, being a football club that's not winning as much as they should, I don't think that ever changes. That's, that's the environment we work in. But we all accept that and we all know that when we sign on. So that's not an issue for us. We, we turn up with a really mature attitude about what we have to do and understand no matter how long I'm in the game or our players are in the game, will we please everyone? Few how occasion for your captain and your vice captains? Strange how it is that they get their yeah. 150 and 200 together and all the other yeah, that come with them. But what sort of, I mean, we all know it's an obligation to play for them, but what sort of does the moment bring? Oh, they're just great people. I mean, and, and there's not a, there's, there's not two people at our footy club that the team won't want to give their absolute all for. But, you know, again, milestone games don't mean you actually play any better. Or you, 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 you probably represent your form more often than not, week in, week out, pretty accurately. And, you know, we're in pretty good form and hopefully we can play without winning, we can play a strong game of football so that Tom and, and Ollie rightly get to celebrate their 200th games together. It's a, such a great milestone. They're, they're such great mates. They're captain and vice captain. They've done a lot of things together at this football club for a long period of time. And it's, it's a remarkable performance that they played. their 150th together and then they end up being at 200 together. It's a pretty special day for them. What do you see of Tom's captaincy, particularly after you know, the issue of them being joint captains, Wines and yep. Jonas, and then it just becoming Tom. What have you seen of Tom in the past? Oh, I've seen enormous growth in Tom. Um, as a player, he's always been pretty, pretty Tom, pretty much Tom. He's been very solid. He's been very honest. He, he gives absolutely everything. As a as a captain and a, a leader of young men, he's just grown and grown and grown. And he's a you know a really rounded person now. He's got he's got a good balance in his life, Tom. He's got a young family. He's got a a footy team that he also leads, but he has a great balance in his life and um, he does it very, very well. So time of the year where a lot of list management decisions are made, have you worked through any discussion with Robbie Gray as to where no, he sits? No, no, no. All, all that stuff and list management decisions is, is for is a time further down the track and, you know, Robbie's, Robbie's one member of our, of our list and all the, all the decisions that will get made through Jason and the team uh, will, will happen later on and they won't be happening now. We, we've got enough things to focus on and that's Collingwood. What's the latest with Scott Lysette's shoulder? Uh, recovering. Um, <coughs> you know, small infection. Likelihood is that he probably won't play any football for the remainder of the season. I would imagine. You know, we won't rule that out totally, but you know, he's got a, he's got a, an antibiotic treatment that he's dealing with now, obviously, and, and it takes a little bit of time to get through that. External pressure. I know you say it doesn't matter. I internally, do you, do you put the pressure or, or start to analyse yourself after ten years, Ken, where it's unlikely that you, you play finals this year and, and a lot of people talk about the 10-year coach you'll be the only one in the league who, who hasn't made a grand final in that time do you start to put that pressure on yourself last man standing still standing that's that, i'll put pressure on myself in year one people think you you think is there a timeline that you stop putting expectation on yourself once i i stop and the team stops having an expectation of, of high level performance we should all walk away regardless of what the situation is. I don't feel like the team and myself or anyone at this footy club feels like that. I feel like we, um, we know exactly what we need to work at and we've got expectation that this year so far hasn't gone the way we would like it. Given that record, how confident are you that you'll be the coach of Port Adelaide Football Club next year? It's, again, it's not something for me probably to, to say too much around other than that I know, I know what my role is and I know what my job is to do and I'll make sure I do it to my absolute best of my ability and I'm sure the club has said a number of times that they know exactly what that is too. Have you started having discussions with club management about your future? I don't need to. 
seriously, I've got a contract for next year. I don't need to have those con conversations. That, that'd be different if it was next year and I was out of contract. But at the moment, we, we, we're, we're all on the same page here. Uh, there's, not a, there's not one one little bit of divide in what we're trying to achieve, and that is to get this win this week. Do you, do you ever have a wry smile at the, the nature of the footy landscape and that you might have some Port Adelaide fans that want you out and then there might be some, some fans in Melbourne that think you're the perfect man to resurrect <laughs> their club? Do you, do you laugh at that paradox? No, I don't, because I understand it. I understand that you know, it's not everyone's wish exactly what's going on anywhere at any stage. You know, and Every club has something similar, whether it be in football or whether it be in, in any type of sport, perhaps, perhaps even in, 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 in the workforce out there, in your jobs. There'll be, there'll be some people who think some people don't do a great job, but most of the time we keep our jobs based on the people who matter think you do. What are the last things you think in when, I mean, through all this pressure, fabricated or otherwise, every single player that we seem to ask about you is, is glowing about you Whereas in a lot of other situations where a coach might be at the end of his tenure, that they're le less glowing. What does that mean to you to have that uh, support from your, your playing group? Again, Max, I think that's a reflection of our, of our environment and, and that would be said about me, that would be said about anyone that works within our industry, that, that we've worked really hard to make sure that we are in this together and we support each other and we have each other's back at all times. Whether that's good or bad times, you have to be there for each other. And, you know, this group of, of young blokes that, and young men that I coach, I'm lucky that they, they understand everyone, you know, both, both ways. There's, there's a, an enormous amount of care that goes both ways. And if you can't pick Fantasia health or fitness wise, can you afford Zach Butters as a small forward? Can you do that shift? We've done that pretty much currently over the last period of time, whether it be Zach, whether it be Connor, whether it be Trav, you know, Ollie would have played forward last week. All our, all our mids at some point have to spend some time for, but that's a typical week for us. Um, what it does do this week, if Jones gets through and, and Mackety steps up for it, like he did last week, Power Pepper keeps growing, you know, there's plenty of flexibility in our team. So, we're But could you afford to, say, use the term pigeonhole him in that role rather than put him in the midfield? He's, look, he's, if I'm being really accurate, he's played pretty much as a forward most of the last six or seven weeks. Um, you know, we just structure our game up slightly differently with where he may or may not appear to be at times. And, um, and for us, he's, um, you know, he can be damaging in both spots. As, as I said, the other players I just mentioned, Rosie, Bo, Wines, they can all be a bit damaging, whether they're forward or mid. Jay Shaw's gave a really Last honest um, and, and really frank discussion about his, his dis, uh, concussion battles. I just wondered, as a former coach of his, if you had a thought on Jay's battle or concussion more broadly and the progress that's been made there? Yeah, certainly on, on Jay, you know, we just wish him, wish him well. He's been a great player for our footy club and he played a, <coughs> a tough and an uncompromising brand of football. You know, I think the main thing is that he's, he's handling the situation, he's getting some support in that area and, you know, I know Chris has spoken with Jay as well and, you know, all those things as a club, we'll support him as much as we can and, um, you know, he's got the right help right now and I think that's really important. But the concussion as a whole, I think, as an industry and, and in, in world sport, we're all trying to still even get more educated on it because it's such a you know such a significant issue that we should give it everything it deserves and make sure we look after people's health.